I got one, two, three, hard. Make your mail in a day, tomorrow I make more. I got four, five, six, yeah. Counting so much money, you can call me cashier. I got one. Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video on the Tempest FX channel. I'm Jamie. I'm Ollie. So in this video, we're going to go over a analysis. It's like a weekly call cool sort of video uh, that we do for our clients. So we're going to be going over the bias for the week ahead and for the following weeks. So I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you learn something uh, and it could get you some nice trades um, for the following weeks. All right, so let's get into the video. Alright guys, so the first pair we're going to step into is the dollar index. So let's go on to the weekly chart. So these, um, the targets we're going to give are for the week uh, and for the following week. So it's not like, a, you know, for the next day um, sort of trading. It's going to be for the next few weeks. There's a bias that we're giving you. So obviously we have a really strong dollar at the minute. We are rallying. We have these nice highs in here. So... That again is a first target. You can see obviously on the weekly chart, this is gonna be quite some distance when you trade on the one hour, 15 minute, etc. Um, and also we have this wicks high in here and then this really big imbalance. So we're gravitating up towards that. So the, the bias for dollar is of course bullish. If we go to the daily chart, you can see on Friday, we did have a retracement down. Uh, we've traded into this imbalance a little bit. We can trade deeper down because we have taken out these daily highs in here. So we can expect some sort of retracement. Um, so coming into Monday, maybe Tuesday, um, if we start to rally, then we should just gun for these highs in here and then that weekly imbalance. Uh, however, if we do start to come down on Monday, you can expect to take out this swing low maybe dig deeper into this imbalance and generally i would say as far as this little gap in here um but generally we are bullish for the dollar index um and we'll, we'll see what we get on monday going into tuesday all right now let's go over euro usd so as you can see it's already very bearish for the uh euro so dollar is very bullish as you saw on the dollar index that jamie just went over so what I can see down here, first of all, straight away, we can see this low here. That's what I expect to see it come to. So if we look in as well, similar to pretty much, it's pretty much the same as on the dollar index. It's just reversed, pretty much picture like that. It's even got the impulse block up there. We've tapped into this uh, imbalance on the daily here, and we've started coming down. So if we go, actually go down to the four hour here, we can see it's even clearer. Yeah, it had a high and it took out that back into the imbalance. And now I like this area to see it take out this. So first of all, we'll be looking at that low there on the four hour. But I'm not going to go in that in depth for the, um, for because it's a higher term target. So if we're targeting down there, that'll be, so if you get in straight away, guys, from when Mark opens, you're looking at 86 pip target. A bit low compared to what we used to go for, but that'd be the first target I'll be looking at. If we quickly look on the week, Oops. Yeah, so after that, we got quite a stretch to our next to our next target, really, which would probably be this week here. Um, but other than that, there's not much to go over on the euro. It's as we said, it's continuing, just rallying down at the minute with dollar. It's uh, very, very bearish for euro USD because USD is very strong at the minute. So yeah, that's what we're looking for, though. And uh, let's go on to the next pair. Okay, so if we look at EU here, you can see we have this high and then we have this lower high. Now, if we go on to GBP USD, you can see we have a higher high. So this is indicating that GBP USD is stronger than Euro USD. So if you want to be a seller in these markets, which obviously that's that's the bias we're given, you do not really want to be day trading GBP USD because that one is the one that's going to run the least. So if you are trying to get shorts on these markets, Euro USD would be the market that you'd want to day trade simply because it is the weaker one. Because you can see from the highs here, Euro failed to take out this high. GU did not fail to take out that high and managed to do it. And you can see how far away it is from the lows compared to what Euro USD is from the lows. So day trading for shorts, we would recommend Euro USD instead of GBP USD. But obviously, if you still want to trade GU instead of EU, um, the bias will obviously still be bearish. You do have these lows in here still, very nice. 
Um, I, I think actually some people would look at this. We don't we don't trade with trend lines, but just looking at this, you know, retail I would imagine would be looking at some sort of trend line there, and they'd be expecting a bounce. Um, obviously we would not. Imagine this actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> Also, guys, you guys, what Jamie was just on about, will know if you're in our mentorship what that is called. Yeah. What Jamie was just going over. How to determine which markets are the best markets to trade. Um, yeah, you, you mentorship people will know that. So we just wanted to take a second out of the video to show you our website and what we have to offer. So we'll start off by showing you the funded account passing service. She got her hands off. Okay, so here's the page where you get a funded account from us. So here are the requirements that are needed to work with us. Then obviously here is what happens if we fail the challenge. If you scroll down, here are the details we just need to put in uh, so we can start working together. And obviously tick the agreement once you've read it and purchase. If you'd like to learn from us, then click on mentorship. Okay, so here is the page. If you scroll down, you can see what is included. And if you click on these, it shows you what the modules are for the videos. If you scroll down a bit further, here are the details that you put in. Again, tick the agreement once you've read it and purchase. So now we're back on the home page, click packages. This takes you to our recommended package you can see there, which contains all our stuff, then build your own. So just press get started now. Then we are on to the section. So you can see everything we often have to offer there and information about it. Then you scroll down, fill out your details, and there's what we have to offer. We'll click signals here, for example. Fill out your Discord username, card details, click the agreement, and purchase now. So looking at USD CAD, guys, I would say with this one, we have just taken out these equal highs here. This is on the weekly chart. So... Now, obviously, we have said that we are bullish on the dollar. To me, usually, can, it just looks messy over here. I mean, you could suggest a high, but that's quite that's quite far. Again, we're on the weekly chart, so this is quite a distance. Um, for this one, I would say to not touch this. I wouldn't touch this market because I can easily see how it would be bullish because our buyers on the dollar is bullish. But I can also see how it could easily be bearish and expect a retracement because we have just taken out significant weekly highs. So this is the sort of market that I wouldn't touch. It wouldn't be high probability trading for me. I wouldn't recommend trading this market. I mean, some of you guys, if you have a clear bias on this pair, then sure, why not? But uh, we've always learned we've been trading for over six years now. If you're not too sure on a market or you can determine or you could see it going bullish and bearish, it's probably not a market you should touch if you shouldn't trade it. Um, so that's kind of what we're seeing here. It was just consolidating, messy. It built up by a side. It's now taken that, uh, and it could it could either retrace or it could it could be bullish. It's um, this one isn't isn't clear to us right now. Right, we're on AUD USD here. So again, this one looks uh, quite nice. It's already had the move uh, a lot of it, but again, we've got some nice targets coming in here. Uh, we're going to ignore this for here until a uh, future one of these videos if we do this. But for the next, let's say, week, two weeks, these are what the targets I'll be looking for. So up here, we've taken out of this high and this high, the previous high up here. Um, and now we're coming down very nicely. So first target I'll be looking for is here. I expect this week to it to push down to there. So that's a bit off. All right, guys. There we go. So if we go on the daily, can we see any retracements I expected to have? So yeah, possibly it's the same thing. It's just not done it yet with this one. I can expect it to come up into here. Um, I can expect it to possibly come up to there. I'll delete that, but I'll just put that on for now, guys. Um, so yeah, I can expect it to come into here, maybe at the start of next week, and then see it push down from there to the first target. And then if it, it does reach first target, I'll expect to see, I will expect it to then follow down to this level down here. And then from there, we will probably reach there, but that's not probably gonna happen this next week coming. So for now, we're gonna look for this first target and then it was still a stretch, but if that hits, we'll possibly be looking for 
Yes, we've got to be careful with this as well. As you see, it played off this a couple of times. This is an impulse block. And it has gone past it, but it has closed above. So, let's see. We'll, uh, I think this time we're going very bullish on the dollar. So, we should see it come down and take these targets. So, so on to GBP CAD here. Now, this one I really like. I think this one's really clean. Um, so, on daily chart, instantly, these lows have my attention we have traded up and we traded into this imbalance again we can determine by monday we use monday as kind of a, a day to kind of get a gist of what the weekly um bias is not the bias but the um if it's going to retrace or not so if we start to come up on monday we will still be bearish we'll still be looking for these lows but it may just want to take out these highs in here if we go on to the one hour yeah, so we, we could we could want to take out these highs in here and trade into one of these imbalances. We'll use Monday to kind of determine that. By New York session on Monday, you can kind of get a grasp because London would have done the damage. Um, but yeah, these lows in here, they do look really nice for GPCAD. And then obviously you do have lower targets as well. We have this imbalance in here. You have a small one in here. So bearish for gp cad i do really like these lows though and once we get these lows let's say it starts to drop and you get a trade a uh, london session on tuesday morning and it trades down to these lows here then i would probably say leave it because it may want to retrace because these are daily equal lows so it could want to retrace after that and then then you know that might be done for the week that might be the mover for the week so i would say once it takes out these lows here if it does do it i would say wait sit on your hands and see uh, if it wants to keep pushing down to lower targets or if it does want to retrace or not <clears throat> right guys so now we'll go over the nasdaq we'll go on to the industry section so are we sorry the spice man it's kind of a fake wick as well yeah so Right, so what's been happening lately, uh, as you've seen, the election's been a bit crazy. So me and Jamie have actually been staying away from markets most days because, as you've seen, it's uh, been ridiculous. That's why do dollars rallied so much and why it's so strong. And what's actually happened, though, look, you see here, the indices have been rallying as well, which shouldn't actually be happening. So they should be down when a uh, dollar is up. So as we see here, though, finally, we've, had, we've got a bit of, um, hopefully what we're going to see is a bit of a correction here. So it's taken out this, let me draw this on for you. It's taken out of that weekly high. And now we've closed a nice down candle, um, bearish candle on the weekly. So what I'm seeing here, let's go down to the one day. What I think is going to happen, I think we're going to see these, that's the way you on. I think we're going to see this low in here get taken. And then from there, it's already on again. Jamie's been looking at the same thing. We're going to see this level. And then from there, that's probably what we'll be looking for this week. It can do more, but I'm not going to bother going to the obvious one down here. We have got this imbalance before that. We'll probably mess around and play off of there. But for now, we're going to look for this target and this target in here for the upcoming week. So... That is what I can expect, and I'm pretty sure Jamie's going to talk over the other indices, but usually the same thing just happen. One will just be weaker than yeah, the others. Yeah, I mean, let's, have, let's, let's go on to the, the S&P. So you can see, by far, and I think, yeah, this one's the strongest one. Um, so again, if our bias is bearish, uh, we want to be trading the weak one, which, which the you can clearly see oh, You can clearly see is the, the NASDAQ. The S&P, again, it looks stronger. And this is generally one... Um, thing I've, I've noticed throughout the years of trading is Nasdaq generally seems to be the mover S&P is always in the middle and the Dow is always the one oh, that's the fuck it wants. yeah well, it's, <laughs> it's the it's the ugly sister basically the Dow is but yeah again it's the same the same bias you know you've got these lows in here for the S&P but I would say the the trader would be the Nasdaq um for for shorts it's the the one that's going to push the, the quickest it's going to be the biggest mover throughout the days uh, so yeah, I'll be day trading the Nasdaq over the S and P and over the Dow as well. This is this is the risky uh, one for us guys. What what we're going over right now for you guys because of 
the uh, what's going on in an election at the minute because this is because uh, it's been going the same way as the dollar. We're basically saying it's going back to normal. Yeah. Which we're confident in, but at the moment anything can happen right now. And you just have to adjust throughout the day. So if it gets to Tuesday, Wednesday, um, you have to st- stick to your your bias so you set on the weekend. You can you know change it a little bit. Exactly. You have to adjust what the market's doing. But yeah, I think that is it for this video. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, this is the same sort of style that we do in our weekly call videos. So the people that are in our weekly calls, you'll kind of, this is very familiar to you guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you, uh, maybe some of you agree with us. Some of you don't, let us know in the comments down below what you think these markets are going to do uh, come in the following weeks. And uh, yeah. What we may do also is uh, at the end of next week or the week after, whenever we see it played out, we might talk over the um, over this video and uh, show the targets that we had on, say uh, if they hit and show them how we knew that, and uh, <coughs> then go over if they didn't, uh, what went wrong and stuff like that, like basically our breakdown of yeah. where it went wrong. And if you've got some trades, I guess yeah. we can show some trades, show them these targets. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. I've been Ollie. I've been Jamie. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace. Sweet. <laughs> now you got it. <laughs>